and my name is Kim McQuarrie, and I'm the Director of Community Programming and the Co-Director of the Innovation Labs here at the Delhi Museum. I'm so happy that you're back to join us for our bi-monthly podcast, Follow the Tangent, Archives, Art, and Anecdotes, where on each episode, we're going to be delving into the archives and examining one of our archive artifacts in order to get a behind-the-scenes glimpse of some art historical topic or mystery. And today we're really gonna look at something interesting because we're gonna look at an often unthought of um, archive artifact and that is newspaper clippings. And we're joined by my wonderful colleague, Kelsey Halbeck, who is our library and curatorial assistant. Welcome to the podcast, Kelsey. Hi, Kim, thank you for having me. I'm super happy to be here today to talk to you about newspaper clippings. Exactly, it's, it's one of those things that people often overlook but there's a wealth of information um, and knowledge that they provide. And so, you know, in previous episodes, we focused a lot on art, you know, whether it's the paintings like Little M that we looked at with Shana or the illustrations um, in the volumes of Surrealist Writing that we looked at with um, Dr. Jeffett. But today we're gonna be looking at, you know, something that's really different with these newspaper clippings. So maybe we could start out by having you share with us a little bit about our collection of newspaper clippings and kind of an explanation of why we have them. Yes, um, so we have a lot of them. And this collection was started by our benefactors, Mr. and Mrs. Morse, who like good collectors, they not only collected the paintings that are now housed in our permanent collection, but they also made a uh, Herculean effort to collect every media publication done about Dali, and that includes these newspaper clippings. They really wanted to establish Dali as a serious artist with merit, and so the writings in these newspaper clippings helped with that scholarship, and they accumulated about 130 binders, which you can wow. see behind me. Um, we, ha we house them in the archive, so each binder gets its own box with its own label, and in these 130 binders, I can't give you a hard number, but I would estimate the clippings number in the thousands. We got a lot. There's a lot of newspaper clippings. It is. And, uh, and so for people who are coming into the archives, you know, what purpose do those newspaper clippings serve and you know, who uses them? So they actually assist us with a lot of research because they span a wide variety of topics. Mm -hmm. So some that may be more obvious would be, of course, we have newspaper clippings on Dolly exhibitions that happened, Dolly publications, but we also have a lot of newspaper clippings on scandals Dolly was <laughs> involved some way in. We mm -hmm. also have... Um, and this is just to name a few, we have more than this, but my personal favorite are the clippings on auction records, mm -hmm. what's sold for what, when, and the older newspaper clippings, they have a lot of Dolly paintings. So it's really mm -hmm. interesting to track that with the newspaper clippings. But in terms of who uses them, we reference them a lot in house, um, understandably, because they're right here, but there have been scholars who travel here specifically to utilize our collection just because it does span um, so many different topics. And it's something our archive in particular is known for because mm -hmm. the Morrises, it took them a while to get started collecting these newspaper clippings, but they, with the enormity of the collection, it's very rare that a scholar will ask me for a clipping and I don't have it. That mm -hmm. is how complete the collection itself is. Yeah, that's amazing. Can we look at a couple of examples of some uh, clippings that you have? Yes, so we have this one right here. Yeah, we can see it pretty well. So Mr. Morris would clip these by hand and he would also create individual labels for them. So you knew the date it was published and the publisher. So that's an example of this, but in this binder, which spans 1943 to 1949, we have a lot of clippings on Dolly's The Secret Life of Dolly, which is his autobiography. He published himself, so we have a lot of that. Um, and we have a lot of long form articles on Dolly, which were common at this time. We have exhibition announcements. We have announcements about portraits that were painted by Dolly. And this binder fortunately has been organized. It's been consolidated. It's all chronological. So they were handled with care when they were last um, opened and utilized. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. And obviously, it's really always amazing when we have these hands-on opportunities to touch these artifacts. Um, but I know that right now, in addition to these binders, that you're also engaging in a project to um, digitize these and make these resources more accessible. Can you share a little bit about that project? Yes, um, it's a two-part project. So with the physical clippings, we have a volunteer named June who goes through, she scans and index them. So one, they're digitally archived. If something were to happen to the museum where uh, the building would burn down, mm -hmm. hopefully not, but just an example, then we have these on a server saved to another location. So we still can preserve them, but also by digitizing them, we can search and find. It's a lot easier to search and find digitally. Anyone who's done research knows this than to go mm. through something by hand. But starting in 2008, we started collecting the newspaper clippings digitally. So we still do bring in some physical ones, but it's mainly digital. We do that through a service called Burrell's Loose. And even though this started in 2009 or 2008, mm -hmm. what happened is reports would be pulled monthly. They would um, create this report that had any articles published with the keyword Dolly, and they would just sit in our server. And it wasn't until I came on in 2018, one of my first projects was to go back to 2008, mm. pull each report. So starting January, 2008, pull each individual clipping out of the report, save it as a PDF, rename it, um, and then index it so that it was digitally archived and then searchable. And I'm really happy to say and proud of me that we are all caught up. So everything has been indexed and is searchable from 2008 up until now. And we're just simply maintaining the project at this point. That's super cool. Well, whenever I get a Google News alert for Dali, I'll know who to send it to. Yes. <laughs> so we, can keep we can keep going. Now, you mentioned a process called um, indexing, and I'm not sure that everybody might be familiar with what that is. So. Um, could you share a little bit with us what does indexing mean and how does it facilitate this? Yes, so indexing can mean different things depending on what profession you're in. Mm -hmm. um, and for this case, it's a lot easier for me to share my screen um, oh, sure. to show and tell versus explain. Much easier with the visual. So just bear with me for a second. And so essentially for us, you start out hope that didn't move too fast, um, with a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And we determine what we want to um, indicate in the spreadsheet. So we always want to have the name of the clipping, the date it was published, um, a brief summary of what was in it, keywords, the publisher, the author, etc. So for our purposes, we have 13 columns of information. Mm -hmm. We fill in for each clipping. And I do these monthly now. So as they come in, I just enter the information and save it in its place on our digital server and call it a day. But this is really essential to searching for what you're looking for. So for example, I could um, search for Van Go Alive, our current exhibition, mm -hmm. and it'll take me to any newspaper clippings with that in the description or in the keywords. So it's a really easy way for us to search and find what we're looking for quickly rather than opening each digital file and searching that way. That's super cool. Now is the digital archive of newspaper clippings, is that available to search um, by anybody online or do you have to have special access? You do have to have special access. Um, we limit it for copyright reasons, but of course, if you have a valid reason for needing to search, we are not going to deny you as long as you have a proper project proposal, but whatever you need, we're, we're happy to try and provide if we can. Awesome, that's cool. So scholars who are out here listening to our podcast, if you need to uh, access our archive of newspaper clippings, you know what you need to do, write up your project proposal and send it on to Kelsey. Now, uh, obviously there's been millions of articles written about Dali, as you said, not just about his art, but because he was such a provocative personality, we've got the scandals and the kind of like intrigue stuff. Um, but typical of Dali and his outsized personality and some would say outsized ego, uh, he believed that despite all of these articles that there was actually not enough being written about him. 
So he came up with his own newspaper, which is um, the Dali News, and yes. like, which is a play on the Daily News. This is the Dali News. Um, do we have copies of those? And if so, like, what is in his own newspaper? Yes. So there were two issues created of the Dali News, and they were both released at the opening of Dali exhibitions at a gallery in New York called the Big New Gallery. We do have the originals of those, but for um, show and tell purposes, we've, we've had facsimiles made, which we bring out as often as we can. I'm just gonna do a shuffle really quick. And we've picked certain pages, but he was the editor, he was the publisher, he was the illustrator, he did everything on his own and he had a lot of freedom that way. So he included what he wanted to, and some things he included were descriptions of an opera that was never realized, but he wrote about it. Uh, his collaboration with Dal or with Disney, Walt Disney, and he also, in the final issue, the second issue, wrote um, or included the first chapter of his book, Fifty Secrets of Magic Craftsmanship. So he was also using it as a promotional tool, not only for himself, but his own works. And he considered himself a writer before he considered himself a painter first and foremost. So he really um, took this project and ran with it. And he had a lot of fun and he had a lot of things to say, but we also have a few ads for made up things like doll and all. That was a fun one. He also has a hieroglyphic interpretation of Dali mustaches. So he really did what he wanted with it and published it because he could. So <laughs> that's what I have to say about Dali news. Yeah, it's just amazing. And it's another example of how far ahead Dali was in terms of his time period, because now it's, well known that people can be brands, but at the time that he's doing this, and obviously this Delhi News is, a, you know, he's creating his own brand and he's marketing his own brand. That was not heard of at that time for somebody to consider themselves to be their own brand. No, definitely not. And with my art history education, I am confident in saying he's really the only artist who took the liberties of doing that. He did not stay in his own lane of being a painter. He really did expand. Mm -hmm. which benefited him greatly. Yeah, oh, definitely. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed learning about newspaper clippings. It's something you would think would be very dry, but it's super interesting. And I think it's cool that we have this, you know, unique documentation of Dali and his art and his life. Um, so thanks for joining us, Kelsey. Thank you for having me and letting me talk about <laughs> newspaper clippings. Exactly. Your love. Um, now, I want to ask people um, to join us again on June 24th, and I'm going to be uh, talking with our curator of education, Peter Tush, about another exciting Dali archive topic. And until then, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at library at the Dali.org, and we would love to answer any questions you have. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank See you. you. Later.